G'day Ziggy D here and welcome to the first ever episode of the Path of Exile Survival Guide series. I've been saying now for a while that I'll put together a full walkthrough of the game and this is it. There's a lot of new players coming to the game in patch 1.0.0 and I'm happy to help you guys out in whatever way I can to get started on this difficult but thoroughly enjoyable game. So, this is not only going to be about how to do quests and how to progress through the different zones and how to fight different mobs and things like that. This is also going to be a full walkthrough of how to go about gearing up your character, how to progress your character's build, and how to build up wealth in a new league. I'm playing this in the new Domination 4-month league. It's about to start. It's pretty much the first day still. And we'll be playing through together and you guys can play alongside and uh, hopefully... This will help you out a lot with progressing and learning this character. So, before you even end up washed up on this beach here, there's one thing I suggest you do. It's a really good idea when you first come into Path of Exile to pick out a well-established, well-defined build that's solid for beginners. Now, in this series, I'll be using my tanky Blood Magic Ranger build, and I have updated this build, and I'll be updating it more in the future. You can find a passive skill tree in the description below, and as we play, I'll di be discussing how you actually you know, use different skills and how you go about building this character in, in a more complete sense, and I'll do build guides as we go as well. But there's going to be tons of other good beginner guys out there. Some skills I suggest are Ethereal Knives. It's an excellent beginner's build. Uh, Freeze Pulse is great. Ground Slam is great. Uh, Lightning Arrow is great. Uh, Rain of Arrows is great. There's quite a few good beginner skills and builds out there. Dual Totem Spork is another good one as well that's still pretty solid despite being nerfed recently. But uh, overall, there's a lot of good builds out there. Just pick one and try and go with it. doesn't really matter too much, but I will be going through with this build. So, one other thing to do before we get started is I recommend just checking through your options. So we're going to go through UI, we're going to enable our corner map, you can set the transparency on this, not a big deal. Uh, auto center map is just fine checked. Uh, always highlight you want uh, enabled, and you should be able to enable and disable this with a hotkey, uh, which is set to Z, I'm pretty sure, by default. Uh, you, only, you only really use this once the screen fills up a bit later, but we'll talk about that more later on. Always show sockets is good to have uh, enabled. Uh, disable key pickup. Show full descriptions is good. Show life mana levels is a great way to be more, uh, have a better idea of how your life and mana pools are looking. And uh, corpse targeting, I think this is all pretty much default here. Uh, it's also a nice idea to show the life bars over enemies as well it gives you a good sense of how much damage you're dealing and uh, you know what enemies to target down so that's pretty much it otherwise you can change around like your sound and your hotkeys I don't recommend changing your hotkeys until you actually become a bit more proficient with the game though and of course graphical settings all that take time to get everything set up nicely so let's begin the official path of exile tutorial which includes standing up now this is, this is designed to, okay, my character's laying down, I need to do something to make me stand up. So you try a few things, press a few buttons, eventually you click, your character stands up. It teaches you the first lesson about moving around. I'm not going to go through the super, super basics of playing an ARPG, but you know, you click your items to equip, you auto-equip this first item, and you have a bow, and you are, you know, you click to attack. I recommend setting up your attack on your right click. Um, generally to uh, stop yourself to, to attack while moving, you're going to be holding shift, and then uh, you can just you can just tap the shift while you're holding down the click button, you'll attack, or you can just use right click. Now, I actually recommend setting that your move only skill uh, to your left click, but we can do that a little bit later on because we, because after we talk to this guy, we have to kill this first zombie and we'll get our first skill gem. This skill gem will depend on the class you roll. Since we're playing a ranger, we get burning arrow as our first skill gem. Now we'll actually set this up as our right click now, and we'll leave this as just our basic setup for now. We can change that. Now, you don't need to full clear this beach, but since uh, this is a beginner-oriented guide, I'm not going to be racing at this. You can pretty much race through and basically skip through entire zones without ever really killing anything. But uh, I'm going to try and optimize this for beginners. So I recommend killing enough mobs just in this first zone, firstly to get you familiar with the controls if you're brand new to the game, but also just to uh, get the idea of how, how your mana and all that sort of thing works, but also to get your XP to around this point here, which will level you up in this first zone when you kill the boss in this first zone. Now you just want to hit your uh, flask keys to keep your mana up, and you'll notice as you kill enemies you'll get more uh, you'll get more flask charges. It's essentially how the flask system works in Path of Exile. If at any time you guys have any questions about mechanics as we, you know, that have been covered in these videos, but uh, I'm still not quite sure about how, how they work, then uh, feel free to ask in the comments below. Just, uh, we'll talk about some super basic stuff in this first couple episodes, but from then on we'll talk about more advanced stuff. So, although this is mostly aimed at beginner players, 
Uh, you uh, more advanced players or more experienced players that just want to brush up on your game knowledge a little bit should be able to get something out of the later episodes at least. Now you notice I just got my first bit of currency item there which is a scroll of wisdom which we used to identify and we got another one. I recommend picking up any armor pieces except for a chest armor piece in this first zone. Wearing a chest armor piece at the start doesn't give you that much benefit and it actually slows your character's move speed down. So we have a fair bit of experience here, I'm happy to move along now. I recommend opening anything that is labelled as a chest. Crates and stuff like that don't give out much loot, but chests will often drop quite a few things, so it's worthwhile opening up the chests. Now we're actually a little bit low on mana, so what I'm going to do now is just kill a couple mobs to uh, refresh my mana flask here, because we'll actually want that mana to kill this boss pretty quickly that we're about to encounter. So we'll just pick off a few more zombies, you'll notice that the flask charge slowly fills, the, uh, the blue flask down here, the mana flask, slowly fills up. Now it's not really worth picking up any of these white items unless there's something we can use immediately. White items don't hold that much value in Path of Exile unless they have various links and other things. Now we actually ended up getting a level here so we'll go ahead and apply that. Now I'm obviously following my build guide for here and I'll link this down in the description for you guys. But we're just starting off with some Evasion on Life, a very nice starting node for the Ranger. And here we go, we've got the first boss Hillock. Now Hillock is very very simple, in fact I'll show you guys how to just stand and tank Hillock. As your mana gets to around halfway you want to pop your mana potion. Then when your health gets to around halfway, you want to pop your health potion, and you kind of want to just alternate between these two. Now, you'll just notice that Hillock pulled a sword out of his chest. From this point on, he does a little bit more damage, but he's still just the same deal of uh, making sure you pop your health flask when your health gets down to around halfway, and you'll be fine. Just use your fire arrow as much as you can, or your, your right-click skill as much as you can, and you'll get him down pretty quickly. And we'll go ahead and pick up all the blues, because we can just sell these straight away in town. Now we can actually identify this leather cap and we probably will do so. Do so. This is an evasion piece of gear. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much the type of gear that you wear right at the start of the game here. We'll go and identify this leather cap. We actually got a really nice leather cap here for the start of the game. This has 17 max life on it. Now this is super important. Uh, early on in the game you want to look for items with max life on it or uh, plus damage. That can spawn on things like gloves and uh, your rings and stuff like that. But um. Plus life is the primary one, it's going to keep you alive, it's going to make things a lot easier. This also has intelligence which is going to help with supporting some skills and things a little bit later on. So we'll go ahead and equip that. Now we'll just talk to these various quest givers here. Uh, we, don't, we don't need to talk too much to these ones. Now I'm not going to bother identifying these because these are things that I probably won't really end up using. So we'll just go ahead and sell these for various currency items. I do have videos explaining like how all the currency and stuff works in this game. Now, first thing we're going to do now is we're going to go to purchase for Nessa and we're going to check for coral rings. There's currently no coral rings in here unfortunately. This is randomized so I got a little bit unlucky this time. No coral rings, but coral rings give you life so you want to go for the one with the highest amount of life. So as you can see, no, there's nothing here I can show you but some will have like 22 life, some might have 29 life. You want to go for the highest life one possible. And then they cost three scrolls of wisdom which will be you'll have right from the start of the game so you can get that life ring straight away. Unfortunately, we just got a little bit unlucky. So we have a few choices of skill here. I'm just going to go with Split Arrow, even though it's not particularly great skill for leveling in the early game. And from this point, we can move straight into the coast. It used to be called the Terraces, so if you guys are ever playing and someone's, you know, you're trying to trade with someone and someone asks you to go to the Terraces, they now mean the coast because it was always named the Terraces and has just been renamed. Now in this zone, you, you pretty much only need to kill enough mobs to get one level. Generally, this is actually only one level uh, when you don't level in that first zone. Since we actually leveled in the first zone, we don't need to worry about it too much. We'll probably just get one more level in here. And the way we're going to do this is just going to use Split Arrow on the really juicy packs of zombies there. So we'll just pick off a few, you know, try and pick off three at once there, and continue along. Now this map kind of spawns randomly, but you kind of want to follow the cliffs along until you, uh, you, you'll find a little, up, little bit of a path through. So we're just going to shoot and scoot to run through these guys here. Uh, if you're feeling a little bit un uh, a little bit unsure about this, you can uh, run backwards towards a safe zone. There's two ways of kiting. A more confident player will kite forwards through the zone and will accrue mo more mobs through chasing them as they run forwards. A uh, less confident player or a newer player can do what I'm doing now, which is kiting backwards towards a safe area. So we, we know that there's no real enemies over here, so we cope. Uh, we kite backwards towards that safe area. Now remember to uh, to really ensure that your character stands still when you attack. You want to hold shift whenever you're attacking. Get in the habit of doing that. It's a really good thing to do. So we can level up our burning arrow. We're fine to level up our burning arrow skill there. It just increases the damage that, that it does boss a slight amount. So I'll continue kiting forwards. Again, if you're a, a little bit less than confident with it, you can, you can kite backwards towards the safer zone. And just take a little bit longer. We're not in any rush here. So I'll just pick off these guys, and this should get me to level just here as well. 
Now, I haven't, I think I will show you guys how to take on the bosses for each zone. It's not mandatory to take on uh, most zone bosses. These are unique mobs that have a, a, basically a kind of a golden coppery coloured name. These usually are fairly difficult. Some of them are much more difficult than the other mobs you'll face in the zone. And uh, most of the time, experienced players will just skip over them because the rewards for them aren't that great while you're leveling. But uh, it can be pretty fun to do, especially if you're new, new to the game, to try and take on these enemies. So we'll we'll try we'll try and do that ourselves. We'll probably get one level before we take on this this uh, enemy. Now you notice there's a little book on the map there. If you're wondering what that is, it's actually lore that's been incorporated into the game just recently. So, we're leveling up Split Arrow. Split Arrow gives us increased physical damage. It's not a major one to level up. Leveling up our skills, uh, it starts to really kick in around level 5, where the mana costs for those start to increase. As usual, get used to popping your mana fast whenever your mana starts to get around halfway or a bit too low. You want to feel free to spam your flask, basically, in um, Path of Exile, because yeah, it, it you know they regenerate as you kill stuff and as you level as well as you just saw everything gets refilled when I level. So I'm just going to kill off these guys so I'm safe. It's a good idea to clear, clear the immediate vicinity before you go and apply your new passive skill point. So we can do there. You can alternatively just click P to open that. And we're going to go get some more evasion and life, helping us a little bit more. So as you can see, we still don't have that much in the way of gear. I haven't seen too many gear drops that interest me, but I'll let you guys know uh, what sort of things we see and what sort of things to look out for. We're looking out for flasks especially, and we're looking out for armor in slots that we don't currently have armor. Or blue items, essentially. So here we've leveled up and we've now encountered the boss. It's probably a good idea to go, and go ahead and clear out some of these enemies first before we actually encounter the boss. Now this boss uses Firestorm and Fireball, I believe. Uh, the best way to deal with this is to basically make sure you're still always kiting and moving around. Firestorm uh, has a short duration attack in an area, so as long as you move each time, you'll only take at most one fireball hit, or you know, one or two fireball hits, and uh, that'll reduce the overall damage you take. If you stand still, you'll eat that entire thing, and you'll take a lot more damage. So I can actually probably give you guys an, I an idea of how much damage you'll take from that. By standing there, you know, it's it's not, not huge. We're wearing, we've got a little bit of life gear on. If you've picked up a coral ring, you'll be able to st survive it a little bit. But you don't want to take that over time because it's going to whittle down your flasks and it's going to make it harder to engage with the boss. So we're going to go ahead and clear this off. There's a scroll of wisdom there. It's very tempting to rush in and grab that, but we'll go, we'll go ahead and kill the fire fury. So you just want to shoot and move. If you're a melee character, you can actually just kind of run in and attack and then move a bit and then, you know, keep keep moving. She'll, she'll move around herself a bit as well. Just try and keep moving to avoid those firestorms. It looks like she only uses Firestorm, not Fireball, actually. Might have been a bit confused about the use of Fireball on this one. So there we go. Cool death animations in the game now. Pretty rad. <laughs> but uh, we got another Scroll of Wisdom, and we found another Battered Helmet, and a dr Driftwood Club. Uh, in terms of picking out magical items, it's not really that worth it to do it. But uh, we can t do it right in the beginning to give us a little bit of extra currency to roll out items. If you're not if you're not in a rush, then it's okay to pick up a few blue items. Later on, we'll kind of not do that too much and only pick up ones that are super useful for us. So on the map here, you can see now there's a kind of a uh, across the water section with a doorway here. This orange represents a doorway. Now we don't actually want to go there just yet. The uh, most efficient way to do this is to actually continue along the shore. And you'll notice that there is another doorway over here to the mud flats. So we want to go into the mud flats. And what we're going to do then is activate the waypoint in here. The waypoint will be right next to the doorway, so we can go ahead and activate that. Now, from this point onwards, we want to run back. So that sounds a little bit sounds a little bit silly, but the idea of activating that waypoint means that we can easily get back to the mud flat later on without having to re-clear this whole entire zone. So now we're going to go head down to the tidal island, which is a side quest, but it's a very beneficial side quest to do early because one of the rewards for it is a quick silver flask, which improves our run speed greatly. So we'll continue down here. I'll just go down the left side. I just tend to go whichever one seems like the shortest sort of side. But it's not a big deal. So here we've encountered a pack of blue mobs, magic mobs. These have extra damage, group frenzy on uh, death. So they have a few different, well, essentially modifiers they called, or mods. You'll hear them referred to as mods. If you ever, if I ever say any, like, sort of terms, action RPG terms, then uh, feel free to, you know, just ask what they mean if you're unsure. But we, we kill those off just the same. Magical creatures aren't too big a deal, too big a difference at this point. But I'll, I'll try and let you guys know when I might become dangerous. So we want to go ahead and get this mana flask for now. It's auto equipped it into the into our middle slot there, and that's fine. We can go ahead and use that. Allow us to use our skill a bit more. We picked up the boots just because we don't currently have any boots. We want to get some magical run speed boots as soon as possible. They're very important to get, so we'll try and get some of those soon. 
but we can we can either craft those ourselves or we can just keep an eye out for boots and hope that we actually get some run speed ourselves so we don't really need to kill everything off in here what we're going to do is we're going to progress reasonably carefully and uh we've we've accrued quite a big pack here so i might actually uh, kill these guys off so as you can see our mana's we're pretty mana starved at the moment but after we kill a few more creatures we'll get our mana flask will refresh and we uh, will be able to we have to use our skill a bit more so we're kind of just going to have to slowly pick them off. Split Arrow is, is kind of not a great leveling skill. Uh, depending on the character you get, the first skill you want to pick from that quest reward selection uh, is preferably one that has some sort of area of effect. So Freeze Pulse is really good. Uh, Ice Nova is really good. Any sort of area of effect skill is really good to get from there. As you can see, we've been able to refresh our mana, refresh our mana now. Mana now. <laughs> refresh our mana. Oh man. <laughs> But uh, we can kill off these guys. There's another magical one. Now those magical killing those magical mobs, the blue glowing ones, actually gives us more XP as well. So they're worthwhile killing. I'm just gonna kill off these guys, finish him off. And what I'm actually gonna do now, after we kill this guy, is I'm gonna go ahead and put move only on our left click. Now this is a really good idea because. Uh, if you're trying to escape from a large group of mobs and you left click on them, if you've got attack on there, your character will stand there and attack. Whereas if you have move only, you'll be able to path out of them without attacking. And uh, that sort of thing can save your life. So it's a really good idea. I pretty much always bind move only to my left skill. I don't think there's really any builds that I don't do that in. So we're kind of progressing along the beach. As You can continue to kite this out slowly and pick them off slowly. But as you notice, we saw a bit of blue sand there. The sand kind of gets a little bit bluer. And that's because it's icy frost from the boss in this zone that we have to kill. Now we do indeed have to kill this guy. So what I've actually done is kited away this large pack of mobs here from the actual boss. Because we don't really want to engage them at the same time. This boss is pretty dangerous. He is named Hailrake and he is the slayer of new players in Path of Exile. So although we're, you know, we're going straight to him, I should be able to help you guys uh, take him down without too much trouble. Alright, so I don't think there's anything else here that's going to be too useful for us. We don't need a chest piece against this guy. In fact, move speed will actually be more helpful for us. So I'm just going to make sure to clear out all of these guys here, and then we're going to try and draw him into the area we've already cleared out. This is the safest way to approach this sort of fight. So here he is there. There's still a few more enemies with him. Now, he's using Ice Sphere. At far range, Ice Sphere can have a pretty good chance of actually freezing you, so it's, it's a good idea to kind of kite left and right like I'm doing now. So you kind of want to circle, almost circle strafe around him so that when he does fire, you're going to be dodging away from those things. It's like, you know, if if a steamroller is chasing after you, uh, you want to, you know, you want to run to the left or right, not run in the same direction as it. <laughs> for the exact same reason. Now, he hits for a fair bit of damage in melee as well, but uh, it's actually kind of not a bad idea to be close to him. As long as you have some of your life flasks up and ready to go. So as you can see, that traveled enough distance to actually freeze us there. So if we're close to him, those ice spears will actually go through us and will be less likely to freeze us. So we took a fair bit of damage, so we're just going to back, up, back off and wait for our health flask. Health flasks heal over time in Path of Exile, unless they have magical modifiers that say otherwise. So you want to give yourself time for that actually to heal you. So we're going to just make sure we've got our mana. I'm going to take one more hit, then I'm going to back off and let my health flask refi refill me. Now we want to run circles around him again so his ice spear can't hit us. And then we're just going to go back to attacking him. Now we're actually out of flasks at this point, so hopefully we can kill him off at this point. Now I'm almost down, so it's getting being a bit of a, a ooh, a bit of a close fight, a bit of a tough fight. There we go. If you guys, uh, if you get down to the point where your flasks are almost empty and you're not sure you can take him on, it's it's fine to back off for a bit, uh, play it safe, and go just kill off some stray zombies or something like that. Now we got pre some pretty nice loot from this guy as well. We got some magical uh, boots that we can check out and. Uh, a bit of currency as well, so we'll check out that. And we'll grab the Driftwood one just to sell as well, even though we don't need that ourselves. Now, we will ID, ID these boots. We've got max life. Not run speed, but extra life is very, very good. So, from this point, what we're actually going to do is gonna we're going to log out of the game. This seems a bit weird, but uh, logging out of the game allows us to spawn ourselves back in town uh, without the use of a waypoint and sin uh, or, or a town portal. Since we actually got that waypoint earlier, we can return to our earlier progress. So I'm going to go ahead and spend my new skill point. We're going to talk to Nessa. She gives us an option of three flasks. While health flasks and magic flasks can be good, Quicksilver flasks is generally much more useful. So we'll go ahead and put that in one of our slots there. Quicksilver flask gives you a short but a very potent boost of move speed. So we have a few, tra uh, a few options here. Fire Trap is a fantastic leveling skill, as is Poison Arrow. I think I will go for... 
Uh, I think I'll go for Poison Arrow in this one. I actually need to read D and D myself since we logged out. <laughs> so now what we can do is we can just sell all of this extra gear we have here. I'm probably not going to identify this helmet because we already have a helmet with life on it. We'll go ahead and sell this stuff, and I'll just go ahead and straight up sell this one because there's not too much reason for me to identify that. So now we have Poison Arrow, and that'll be our primary uh, our primary skill now. In fact, we don't really even need um, Split Arrow anymore. Poison Arrow will be our main AoE ability. So, and that's pretty much I don't think you need to talk to Atakali at all. So what we'll do is we'll take the waypoint back to the Mud Flats, and we'll do this Mud Flats zone in this episode as well. Okay, so in Mud Flats, you want to just head out straight right from the waypoint. This zone can spawn a little bit differently, but you'll eventually encounter a creek no matter what. Now these rowers here, they charge and they are very dangerous. Get used to being afraid of these guys. In normal, they're not too much of a threat, but in later difficulties, they can do a lot of damage. So hitting them will actually interrupt their charge a lot of the time if you can stun them. Otherwise, you just want to make sure you run to the left or right and avoid that charge because it does do a lot of damage. So we're going to follow these creeks along until we eventually get to a rower nest. We are doing we are doing the quest. Uh, a, no, we're not doing. We don't have the, we don't have the name of the quest yet, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But we head down along this creek here, and you can actually see an exclamation mark on the map there. And that's where we're headed. So around each of these nests will actually be a very large pack of these rowers. So what you want to do is just slowly pick them off with your AOE skill, and just try and if you can put yourself between trees and stuff like that to avoid their charges a bit, that's a good way to do it. Otherwise, just try and avoid the group of the charges. You don't want to get caught in amongst these guys if possible. So a uh, poison arrow does a, a bit of damage on hit, and then it leaves a poison cloud that does uh, a uh, a damage over time effect to the enemies. So it, it's a pretty good way of leveling. You can uh, kill enemies. We actually got a, a quick fill, silver flask as a drop then. So we'll go ahead and pick that up. That won't happen. That's a, that won't often happen. That's a very very rare drop. And there's our first glyph. Green items are generally quest items, so we got this one now. We actually now have the uh, the quest for this one. Now, I'm not going to bother picking up too many magic items. Okay, so then what we want to do is follow the next creek along. We can actually see the one just to the south is the next one, but generally the creek will connect all of these beds. And I should actually be killing these guys off rather than running through them. It is possible to just sort of kite them around, grab the glyph and then run without killing them, but we'll go ahead and kill this pack. Just for safety's purposes. So we actually ate a charge there. It did a bit of damage now. We've got we've got quite a bit of life stacked now. We have about the equivalent life of what you would have if you got that first coral ring. So it is worthwhile if you didn't get that first coral ring, like I didn't, is to actually check the vendor again. Now I'll grab that. I'll grab that club just to sell. And as usual, opening any chests that are named as chests, because uh, that are you know in your immediate vicinity. You don't need to go hugely out of your way for them. So we actually ran down to the ocean there. So we want to turn back and head the other direction. The next uh, nest should be somewhere up along here. So we'll follow this creek again. And I'll try and I'll try and share all of these little tricks for completing these quests as we go as well. And uh, just fo following these this creek like this is one of those. And we'll get that down. We'll, we'll grab the glyph. And now what we want to do is actually uh, there is what is what is this icon on the map here? This is oh okay. So we're playing in the new domination league. So this is something new for me to discover as well. I'm gonna go ahead and open these chests. Now in domination league there are shrines. They're monster shrines. And uh, you can tag these to convert these to your side, otherwise they give powerful buffs to the uh, enemies or they can damage you. As you can see, this one has a Shock Nova effect, and uh, if we can kill off the enemies around it, we can actually run in and grab that and turn that to our side. What I actually do is I'm going to use my Quicksilver Fast to quickly run in here, activate it, and that's now our Shock Nova effect. <laughs> So this is what the new Domination League is about. This should make this playthrough a little bit more exciting, even for players that are a bit more experienced with the game, as we play through this Domination stuff. I'm pretty keen to play around with this, but uh, that's pretty fun. That's pretty fun. I like this. <laughs> so we now have the Shock Nova effect. Essentially, that's it. You steal the effect. The idea of this Domination League things is that uh, you have the choice. Do you run in there and try and grab it yourself, take that risk, or do you slowly pick off the enemies and then get it afterwards? Okay, so as you can see, there's a doorway up here. What we actually want to do first is go and activate the glyph wall. Now, that's actually a side quest. Now, we've encountered the boss for this zone. I should remember that I am trying to show you guys the bosses, so we'll show this one. He's actually kind of just desynced away a little bit. That'll happen sometimes, especially with these charging enemies. 
Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab these wool gloves because this gives us energy shield. The important thing about having a small amount of energy shield, uh, even though it's only 4 effective life extra, it actually prevents 50% of stuns. And uh, these charging mobs can stun a lot. Now this guy has a uh, basically a poison cloud surrounding him that will damage you when you're close to him. So ranged characters have a bit of an advantage here, but his charge is also very dangerous. So you want to try and avoid his charge if possible. As you can see, I'm standing close to here and I'm taking damage over time. It's not a huge amount. You can use your life plus to kind of go through it. So we're just basically in normal. Again, going to stand here and tank. Just using our health potions every so often. And uh, backing off if we need to regenerate. But we don't. Pretty easy stuff. We are able to go in there. Now, we actually got a power amulet. Now, we currently have equipped a coral amulet, which gives us life regen, which is kind of handy. But power amulet's going to allow us to use our skill more with mana regeneration. So we'll go ahead and equip that. And there's nothing else that, there that we need. So now we want to kind of continue along the wall. So we've explored up here. So somewhere down in this area should be the glyph wall quest we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and activate that. And here it is down here. Now this side quest up to the north that we've avoided currently uh, is... Uh, it, essentially, it gives you a, uh, a passive respec point, which allows you to uh, play around with your tree a bit. It allows you to, you've spent a point, you're trying to change your mind, you want to put it somewhere else. It allows you to respec out of that. Now, that, that quest is not at all mandatory, and uh, I think we'll probably, we'll probably leave them for when we want to do them. Uh, essentially, those are the sorts of quests you can leave. If you want the passive respects, then you can come back and do it. I haven't, I haven't fully decided whether I should show them all in uh, the normal order or whether we should just use them when we need them, which is usually the case that most experienced players go. So we'll continue on into the submerged passage now. Now, we want to go back to town pretty soon. There's actually a waypoint in here we can use to go back to town, so we'll go ahead and grab this waypoint. More evasion and life, and we'll make sure to keep upgrading our poison arrow. The poison cloud effect from poison arrow uh, takes its damage directly from the level of the poison arrow gem, so we want to level it up as much as possible. Now, these, these crabs here, uh, after they die, they uh, kind of flip their shell off and spawn a second ranged form. So you actually kind of get a double whammy of experience for these guys, but they're a little bit annoying to fight. You'll notice I sometimes leave mobs. Generally, it's uh, in, if you're trying to you know level somewhat somewhat speedily, and uh, a lot of players enjoy playing efficiently, and I'm one of those players, then uh, leaving single kind of enemies by themselves is fine because the time it takes to kill a single enemy is better off spent usually trying to kill a group all at once, and often the the poison cloud will you know finish off the work for us as well. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go tag this mob. There's a big group of squid here, so we're going to kite these guys back until the poison arrow cloud takes care of this. Any sort of AOE spell can kind of be used to this effect. So I killed off all those guys. Now what we're going to, what I'm doing to navigate this zone is we're following the outside wall all the way along. If we duck into the middle, we'll kind of just kind of waste time in the middle. So we want to just keep clearing around. We're going pretty good for level. Uh, in a second after I kill these mobs here, I'll show you kind of how to judge uh, how your character level is compared to the zone level. So if we press uh, the map uh, hotkey, or I believe uh, I believe you can also open up the journal here, and you can see if you mouse over your character, you can see monster level 5 is this zone. Now if you open up your character panel, oops, uh, you can see your, my current level is 5, and you can also see it here on this map screen. So we're at, we're at the same level for the zone. Now you can, go, you can be about two levels under and still be pretty safe if you're a bit more of an experienced player, but our beginner players being at about the same level as the zone is pretty fine. You experience no, you get no experience penalties from that, and uh, it's all pretty good. Now, what we've actually found here is the flooded depths. So we're going to go into the flooded depths. This is a side quest, but it's one you definitely want to do because rather than giving you a passive respec point, it actually gives you a passive point that you can spend straight away. Respec points are only good if you need to change something later or correct a mistake. So that's the sort of thing we can leave until later. Now, these are magical mobs, and these ones deal cold damage as well. So we just want to be aware of that. When you get hit by cold damage, it will slow you down. So if you're surrounded by enemies, that can be a little bit dangerous. But this one here gains endurance charges, and it's a good idea whenever you see these blue ones to counter those. As I said before, you know, we uh, tend to leave uh, single enemies by themselves, but we're going to go ahead and uh, kill off blue packs, blue enemies, because they're, they're juicy, juicy and full of experience, overflowing with experiences. <laughs> but uh, we kind of get also get a double whack of experience from these magic ones as well, since they we can actually kill them twice. I'm taking a bit of damage in here, but it's not too bad. Just be mindful of that and keep an eye uh, on the bottom left of your screen and pop that health fast whenever you need to. 
Now, kind of the same idea for navigating here. You just travel along the outside, and you'll eventually get to a kind of a water section with a bridge. That's what we're looking for. So we found the water section, so we should be able to find the bridge pretty shortly. And here is it. I'd say this is about it. We run in here, and am I correct? Here he is, the the de the dweller of the deep. Now you actually get this as a side quest from town, but we kind of just found this ourselves, and that's fine. Now in his first form, he's the same as the larger crabs. He uh, just attacks with melee attacks. He slows you down if he hits you, and he can also freeze you. So it's a good idea to try and avoid those. Uh, melee attacks if you want. If you're a melee attacker as well, you can kind of just stand there and try and tank it. We'll, I'll kind of, we'll show that off for example, how well we can do that. So he does a fair bit of damage, so you need to start being a bit more careful. We need to back off after we take about, if, after our health gets down to about half, let it let us heal up a bit. So we can use our Quicksilver Fast to get away as well as a ranged character. This is kind of why I recommend a ranged character. There's a bit more you can do to protect yourself to uh, mitigate that incoming damage. And we'll finish him off here and he'll reach his second form which is a ranged character. He'll actually run away from you this time. <laughs> now he'll he'll kind of spit out these things and it's a bit difficult to dodge them so you kind of you kind of just can't. You kind of just have to stand there and tank really. We just keep our health and mana up and we can back off and kind of run away from him if our health gets a bit too low. So we're we're doing okay for now. We've got plenty of life flask still. Our, our flask actually got refilled from killing his first form as well. So we can grab that, and we actually found a magical short bow. Now we'll probably grab this magical chest, and if it is good, if it has life on it, then we'll go ahead and uh, equip it, otherwise we probably won't. Because uh, heavier chest pieces will slow you down more. Now this only has one life regen on it per second, it's a terrible chest piece, <laughs> so we're not going to bother with it. The short bow is nice to equip, even though we're using poison arrow, which doesn't really worry about our bow's damage too much. Uh, the sh short bows actually have increased attack speed, which makes it a bit easier to use poison arrow. So we'll go ahead and, and equip this. And we can actually just drop this crude short bow here. We don't actually need that at all. So, we've now cleared out the grand, the uh, granddaddy crab in here. <laughs> and we can just run back the exact way we came. And we can pick off any mobs that we missed on the way. Now you notice the uh, flask that I'm running now is two life flasks and two mana flasks and one quicksilver. Generally you want that one quicksilver, but uh, you can kind of play around with the ratio of health to our uh, mana flask depending on how, how you're finding the game. If you're finding it a bit more difficult, you can run three life flasks instead if you're having trouble managing your life flasks. Otherwise two mana flasks to two life flasks is a nice combination for leveling because it'll allow you to use your skills a bit more. And uh, once you practice with managing your flasks, which is super important in Path of Exile, uh, you'll be able to, you know, not waste them too much, not use them when they're already in effect. Like if you double, if I tap my, you know, my Q flask here, which might be one for you, uh, if I tap that twice, it won't actually give me double effect or anything like that. It'll just waste a, waste a charge of it essentially. We can only heal a certain amount from flasks at any one time. So we want to we want to time those out as much as possible. Now, once to navigate from that side quest zone to the next one, uh, we want to just follow the wall. Now, you may actually run into the waypoint first, and what you want to do then is just either follow the wall if in either direction. And if you discover the um, the uh, the doorway to the upper submerge, then you probably want to go back and find the the uh, side quest first. So we've got some more uh, magical enemies here. These ones are quick, so they move around a bit faster. Not too big a deal. I will actually group these guys up so we can use our poison arrow a bit more effectively. That's probably a skill to worth mention. Uh, worth mentioning is grouping up of mobs. Essentially, by running around them a bit and kiting them together, you'll be able to group them up like I'm doing now, and that'll make your AOE skills much more effective. And you'll get much more uh, effectiveness from your mana as well. Now we're going to level our poison arrow again. Give us some more damage, and we've we've found the waypoint. So we want to make sure we activate this. Now, from this next point, one last little burst for this particular episode. Actually, we want to use this waypoint to go back to town. Now's a fantastic time to go back to town. So we're going to go back to Lion Eyes Watch. And we're going to talk to Tarkley. And he's, he's going to give us an option of skill gems here. Now, for us, we have a few options. Bear Trap's a nice uh, single target sort of skill. Rain of Arrows is a nice uh, bow skill in general, but we're going to stick with Boys and Arrows, our main AoE now, and Bear Trap actually becomes fantastic single target as well. It scales independently of your weapon as well, so even if we have a terrible bow, we, we can still use it. Now from killing the Granddaddy Crab, we get this Book of Skill, which we can put in our inventory, and then we can open it up and right-click it to get an extra skill point. Huzzah! Which allows us to get Finesse, which gives us a ton of extra attack speed, which is really nice. Now we just want to sell any spare items we happen to have picked up, 
And we'll keep the Quicksilver fast for later. Not in our guild stash, in our normal stash. We'll just chuck it in there. As you can see, completely empty new stash. Pretty exciting, new league, I love it. So for the last little burst for episode one, we're gonna go back into the submerged passage. And we're gonna continue along the wall. Of, now, so we're gonna head up around this way. So follow this wall out, and this should take us to the next zone. We wanna go to the, we wanna head towards the ledge and get the waypoint in the ledge. Which shall be our end point for episode one. But this has been pretty fun. Let me know if you've got, you guys have enjoyed episode one, or if you'd like me to make any changes to the format. This is gonna be something I'm doing, you know, once per day, and uh, we'll progress along, and hopefully you guys will get a lot out of it, and uh, hopefully it'll improve over time as well. So we're now into the upper submerged passage, which is kind of just a straight run. We just want to follow one of the walls. Looks like we chose the wrong wall, but that's fine. <laughs> and head along here. There's a bridge here. We'll head along here. Now we probably we don't really want to get caught on the bridge with all of these squid, so we're just going to kite those back a little bit. Let our AOE skill take care of these guys, and they'll whittle down and die. They're pretty nice XP in here actually. It's a nice zone for leveling up. And we should be doing fine on leveling as well. We're levels. We're level six, and the zone is level six, which is fine for a beginner player. That's a fine sort of ratio to be. If you are, t you know, if you are having a bit more trouble with it, then uh, feel free to stick around and clear out a zone a little bit more thoroughly, or even to, uh, you know, go back uh, refresh a zone and uh, just clear it again, just to get an additional level B one level above the zone. It could give you a little bit of extra life, but generally speaking, it's fine as long as you're keeping an eye on your gear and making sure we're updating everything. We're still kind of, we're on the lookout for better gear, because we need new gloves, we need a belt, we need rings, we need, our amulet's okay for now, and we want a good chest piece soon. But I'm happy to not equip these for now. Now these, uh, I should probably talk about these creatures here. They are, from close range, they'll put out a wave which does a lot of damage at close range. So what we want to do is kind of just, you can run to the side to avoid them when they attack it, but it's actually died from the poison cloud, so we can't show that off. But uh, we'll continue along, we'll try and follow this wall. Just pop my poison arrow down every now and then. So, we'll continue back then. Looks like that's not the correct way. Just continue with following the outside wall. And, as I said, looks like I picked the, the wrong outside wall. These maps are all randomized in Path of Exile. There are sort of set randomizations and you'll eventually learn them, but uh, they, I, the developers seem to be adding more variants of each map as, over time as well, which is nice. Keeps things a bit more fresh. So I've got a large pack of squid here. So as you saw, it, it cast the wave, but we were able to run back. The waves move quite slowly, so if your re reaction time is good, you can you can kind of run out of out of range of them. And they do a lot of cold damage up close. So you want to try and avoid those as much as possible. Now we've encountered the unique mob for this zone, which I think is actually new. I can't can't quite recall if this is new or not to 1.0, but um, Blood Princess, pretty basic, same same sort of deal. She actually spawns a lot of extra squid, so just kind of uh, hang back and kill her if you can. As a melee character, it's uh it's tough to deal with those. I'm not gonna lie. You uh, kind of want to run in an attack and then run to the side to avoid their waves, or you just want to you know eat some and then go back and heal. Now we've got a medium mana flask, so we're gonna replace our other mana flask with this one, and we also have. A vest here, which just has dexterity and invasion rating. We're getting quite far now without having found a good chest, so I'm okay with equipping this one now. It's going to give us quite a bit of evasion. And we actually, you know, you saw us pick up a bunch of evasion nodes on the passive tree. So, uh, we'll kind of ampl amplify the effectiveness of that. Oh, and we have our first quiver. So that just auto equips. Quivers just give you uh, either dexterity or increased damage. Not a big deal for this sort of setup. We actually want to equip Bear Trap, something I forgot. So we now have. Bear trap a single target. I'll keep fire on there for if we need any longer range sort of stuff. But here we go, the ledge. Now what we're going to do is just follow the ledge. Ledge is just a straight zone, uh, nice for farming, and it's also it's kind of just a fun zone. I really like fighting skeletons, and there's plenty of those in here. So we're just going to pick off the juicy packs of skeletons here, kind of round them up if we can. Looks like my frame rate's taken a massive hit in here for some reason. Occasionally I run into issues when recording. So there's a big pack of skeletons here, we'll just work these guys down with the fire arrow. Continue, keep continuing forwards. Now I've actually got a pack of uh, these sort of uh, cannibals here. 
work these down, you notice they had a little spinning red aura around them. Now that was coming from a totem, which is up ahead, so we drew them away from the totem. That's the best way to deal with them. Now, I think we want to go for Heart of the Oak. I'm going to go for Heart of the Oak next. That start and recovery is also going to help us in the early game. And there's a Rustic Sash, so not, not the best belt for us. It just gives increased damage, but uh, we might as well equip it. There's no harm in doing so. So here's that totem. So we drew away the enemies from that totem. And just grabbing any more chests. Oh, okay, looks like we have another Domination Shrine here. So my strategy for these is going to be, because I because I don't know what the Shrine does yet, it's going to be to draw away these guys away from the Shrine, out of the effectiveness of it. You saw that it had an aura around their feet, kind of a glowy aura, so just standing back and letting these guys come to us is probably the best way to deal with this. Make sure to grab that Portal Scroll. So we're just trying to keep our mana up and keep working out these guys. We can actually, if there's any stronger single targets in here, which doesn't look like there is, we can throw our bear traps down. Now let's run in and see. Looks like the totem's still pretty far away. Work our way through. This uh, I'm enjoying this domination mod. I, I, I was pretty excited to play it, to be honest. So, been looking forward to doing this series. Let's pick these guys off. Just out of range of the uh, aura effective, so... You know, we can find out once that what that aura does once we actually get in there. There's an amber amulet which gives us strength, which is actually a life buff as well, but not incredibly useful for this character, just being strength. The mana regen is probably more useful for us at the moment. So we're just going to keep killing these guys off. Our current boots are okay. Uh, if if I didn't have any magical boots whatsoever, I'd pick up these two linked wrapped boots and I'd use this transmute on them to try and roll move speed on them. It's a really good idea to get move speed as soon as possible. So that includes crafting our own ones. So we're going to tag this shrine for ourselves, and it gives us... Ooh, always get critical strikes. This should be fun. Oh yes, we're going to just one-shot everything. <laughs> That's pretty fun. So we'll just continue along, and we get to the waypoint. We'll just go ahead and we make sure we to activate that waypoint, make sure to click on it. We'll go ahead and use the last 10 seconds of this diamond shrine here, because we're always going to get critical strikes. We'll pick up that chain belt. That's actually good for us. Gives us some extra energy shield. And there goes the last of our critical strikes. And that ends the first episode of the Path of Exile Survival Guide. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and whether you have any questions in the comments below. And check out the description for the passive skill tree. And I'll try and get these episodes out to you daily. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.